Welcome to Elijah's Prophetic Cup and the Fivefold Ministry. Join us as we discuss the five Torah scrolls along with topics that include the gifts of the Spirit and the School of the Prophets. Now my wife and your host, Tokoa Manning. Hello, this is Tokoa Manning, and I'm here today with my better half, Jeffrey Manning. And my husband has agreed to read an allegory I wrote in the voice of the prophet Hosea. And today, as my husband reads with all the emotions of a prophet whose bride has a wayward heart, we pray the message paints a picture and causes all of us to run back to our first love and to be a bride such as Ruth, whose book is read every year at this season. Without further ado, here is my husband, Jeff Manning. Thank you, hon. I heard the men whispering in the market. Suddenly, one of them with piercing eyes was standing before me. What is your daughter's name, he asked. I glanced down at her angelic face before answering him. Lo Ruhema, I whisper. So it is true, he says, his eyes intently staring at me. I stood up straighter, returning his gaze before answering. Yes, her name is an example of what is coming on our people because we have left our first love. The man's face flashed with disgust. He placed his loaf of bread back into the basket of my shop. Who would do such a thing as name their daughter this? He raised his hands up to the heavens in disbelief. Disgusting, he said before he spat on the ground. The other men in the marketplace gawk. I continue wrapping a fresh loaf of challah for the customer in front of me and then speak. What was I to do? Hashem told me to name my daughter no mercy. I then tell him, we would do well to return, to do the shuva. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry father. The man shakes his head and walks away from me. I embrace my daughter and I tell her I love her. She is still too young to know or to understand. Oh, the grief I feel to speak over my own seed, a name is no mercy. My second son is named Lo Am I, which means not my people. His name too was ordained by Hashem, who spoke to me saying, you are not my people and I am not your God. He tells me that at a later time, he will proclaim that we are his people again, but things are very somber for now. My mother hates the name of her grandchildren. Who can blame her? I look at them and I'm reminded to weep and mourn over my people and to fast for us. I warn and explain what I am hearing, but no one seems to, to pay much attention to a man whose wife continues to love another. Abba tells me that my wife that I love so much is like his people. Even though she looks at me with her dark eyes and raven hair and speaks such lovely, lovely words to me, I know her heart is far from me. Abba tells me that his people draw near with their mouth and with their lips honor him, but they have removed their hearts far away. My heart breaks daily. Before I go any further, Shalom. My name is Hosea. My father was the prince of the tribe of Reuben, and he too was a prophet. His name, V-E-R-I, means Adonai's well, and his writings were incorporated in the book of Isaiah, chapter 8. I, Hosea, wanted to speak to you and your people. I am aware that it is 2020 there, but my writings were not just given to me from my people but for future generations as well. I pray you will listen. Where to begin? The father told me, Hosea, take to yourself a wife of harlotry and have children of harlotry. 
for the land commits flagrant harlotry, forsaking me. It is difficult, but I have a deep, passionate love for my wife. It's as if the Father has given me more compassion and love for Gomer than anyone I've ever met. Oh, how I love her, even though she has eyes that lust after other gods and other men. So many nights I walk the streets and cornel brothels looking for my beloved. I search the red light district sweeping and praying. Hashem told me to go show love to my wife again though she is loved by another and is an adulteress. Love her as I love my people Israel, though they turn to other gods and offer raisin cakes to idols. My wife Gomer was like a slave standing there in public at the auction. She may as well have been naked. Men were looking her over. I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and a homer and a half of a barley. The silver and the barley amounted to 30 shekels or three pounds and 10 or 15 shillings. 30 shekels is the estimated value of a manservant or maidservant. For it is stated in our Torah that if an ox push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master 30 shekels of silver. In Numbers chapter five, barley is an offering for a woman suspected of adultery. I paid the highest bid for my bride because even though she has been unfaithful, my love for her is unending. Possibly you are remembering that 30 pieces of silver was paid to Judas to betray the Messiah, Yeshua. Yeshua came to pay the price to redeem us from the slave market of sin, to clothe our shame with his righteousness. He was the one who was sold for 30 pieces of silver. The father's sorrow has become my sorrow. If only I did not love her so, then perhaps my heart would not be so broken. Every day I picture Gomer, Gomer holy, pure, dressed in robes of righteousness, smiling at our children and teaching them the father's word. Possibly you've never heard of me. My prophetic ministry began during the prosperous time of Jeroboam II. But after he died, his son, Zechariah, took the throne. He was assassinated after six months by Shalom. Shalom, too, was assassinated, not even a month into his reign. Things have become grave. We've had five kings, and three have seized the throne through violence. Manahem shed much blood to get his position. Yes, he took the throne after Shalom and he began paying tribute to Assyria. The amount of silver he paid was almost 40 tons. The father called him a vulture and said, set the trumpet to your lips. One like a vulture is over the house of the Lord Adonai because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my Torah. That was in Hosea 8.1. It seems wickedness brings such leaders to a nation. I tend to refer to the northern kingdom of Israel as Ephraim. It's become complete anarchy here. Ephraim is like a dove, silly and without sense, calling to Egypt, going to Assyria. They bargain and carry oil to Egypt. Who ever heard of such a thing? They seek leaders to save them, but not Hashem. Some trust in chariots and horses, but we must trust in our father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They think the leaders give them oil, grain, new wine, and lavish them with silver and gold, but as we know, it is Hashem. Ball worship is strong here, but it's, it's strong there where you are sitting in the 21st century. Ball means Lord. Our master. Baal Peor was and is a god of sexual appetites. We have fertility goddess worship. We have idols that are in, have enlarged sex organs. Orgies and temple prostitutes are common. The people seem to have a license for perversions and even child sacrifices to Malek. 
I have viewed some of your movies there and even commercials promoting drugs for sexual arousal. I have been looking at the number of sacrifices to Malek and the number of abortions in your nation. It made me packaged differently, but I fear your nation and others have even surpassed my people, Israel. During the reign of Jeroboam II, we had economic prosperity. The people were extremely wealthy, overfed, and self-consumed. We, of course, cannot take selfies on iPhones, but we are self-seeking. Friendly relations with the Phoenicians have brought many things of beauty and luxury to my people, just as many nations have brought luxury to your people. They recline on beds of ivory while their, moral, their morals collapse. Ephraim says, surely I have become rich. I have found wealth for myself. In all my labors, they will find in me no iniquity. Things creep in slowly, desensitizing us. I have seen your hoarders in the bridal television shows where the bride's gowns are so sheer, see-through even. The brides expose their breasts and dress like a harlot on their wedding day. Oh, how his bride needs clothing. The father says he will uncover our lewdness in the sight of our lovers, and no one will rescue us out of his hand. Hashem told me he will be like a lion to Ephraim and like a young lion to the house of Judah. He will tear to pieces and go away, and there will be none to deliver us. The people seek him at their festivals, but he has pulled back until they acknowledge their guilt and seek his face. He tells me that in our affliction, we will earnestly seek him. But people do not want to speak of affliction or suffering. They say, tell us smooth things, give us prosperity. Although my heart is tender and sore concerning Goma, I am not without hope. Hashem tells me that after the affliction, he will lead us into the wilderness and speak tenderly to us. A marriage to Baal is nothing but ownership, slavery, dominance, and it leaves one very empty. But Hashem says he is our maker. He is our husband. He has given us a wedding ring and a marriage covenant. He wants a bride who is searching for him like the woman in the Song of Songs. She says, daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him I am faint with love. Like the father, I married Gomer. She is my bride, but she is often straying after other lovers. Her name means to come to an end. Her name, like my children, pierce my heart. The father often uses my wife and my children to speak to me. The things he shares are very sorrowful, but still he offers mercy. Some days my grief seems to weigh more than the sand of the seashore. Yet he tells me one day, one day, the number of the Israelites will be like the sand of the sea which cannot be measured or counted. And it will happen that in the very place where it was said to us, you are not my people, that we will be called sons of the living God. I cling to this. I continue to warn people, but my voice is often used in mockery. The people are in a hurry. They are busy and they continue to run to and fro. People are eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage just like the days of Noah. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. They do not know what is coming upon them. Remember when your tires fell? It seemed like a Hollywood production, but there it was on your news channels. It came unexpectedly. It came in the bleak of an eye. The 911 is remembered each year. 
It is the father who told me to go take a prostitute as my wife and have children of adultery because this land is fragrantly prostituting itself by departing from the I am. I, Hosea, wanted to come and bring this message to you and plead with you during this season to fall in love again. Come back to your first love. The Messiah speaks to one particular body of believers in the book of Revelations, and he says, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent, may we all renew our vows this Shavuot and be like a bride who is working on her bridal garments to become without spot or wrinkle. I wish to leave you with the last words from my writings. The Father is speaking here as he pleads for all of us to bring him words and return. Return, O Israel, to Adonai your God, for you have stumbled in your iniquity. Take words with you and return to Adonai. Say to him, take away all iniquity and accept what is good so we may repay with offerings of our lips. Assyria will not save us. We will not ride on horses and we will never again say our God to the work of our hands for with you orphans find mercy. I will heal, heal their backsliding. I will love them freely for my anger will turn away from him. I will be like the dew for Israel. He will blossom like a lily and thrust out his roots like Lebanon. His tender shoots will spread out. His beauty will be like an olive tree and his fragrance will be like Lebanon. Those dwelling in a shadow will return. They will grow grain and bud like a vine. His renown will be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more are idols to me? I have responded and observed him. I will be like a luxuriant cypress tree. From me will be found your fruit. Who is wise? Let him discern these things. Who is intelligent? Let him know them. For the ways of Adonai are straight, and then just walk in them, but the wicked stumble in them. That was Hosea 14, and this is Hosea signing off. Shalom, brothers and sisters.